Good morning, friends. And happy Pentecost. Woo woo! I love Pentecost Sunday. On Pentecost, we, re we remember the, the gift of the Holy Spirit on the disciples in the story in Acts chapter 2. We're going to uh, read and proclaim that story today. I'm so glad to be able to worship with you this morning. Uh, if we haven't had a chance to meet yet, my name is Bailey. I'm the pastor here at Lamona Village Chapel. I'm so glad that we're able to just celebrate Pentecost today. On your way in, you received a bulletin like this. It's got a connect card in there. If you could fill that out for me, drop it into the offering plate later in the service. I love the opportunity to connect with you today. Uh, we're going to run through some of the announcements on the back of there. Starting with our first one, uh, family promises happening this week. Beth is so excited. Uh, Beth uh, organizes our family promise uh, partnership with family Pro promise of Brandon. We're going to be welcoming in, I think it's three families this week. Uh, into our fellowship hall. We provide housing for them for a week, as well as meals. So if you would like to sign up to be, uh, to provide a meal for them or to serve as an overnight host for one of the nights that they'll be staying here, uh, talk to Beth after the service. She would love to get you plugged in uh, and get you signed up for that. We love serving our community in this way. Uh, when we pray for those who are experiencing homelessness in our community every week, this is how we respond to that. It's one of the ways that we do that. So we, we give thanks for that opportunity. Uh, we have the Wilma Snyder Scholarship open. Applications are available on the welcome table. If you are a college student or love a college student, uh, please give them an application. Those are due back to the church office on June 30th. It works out to, I think it's $500 a semester as a scholarship to help pay for tuition, books, room, board, whatever they need. So grab an application, take it home. We would love to bless um, those who are getting their higher education um, in that way. My friends, next Sunday, June 12th at noon, over in the Fellowship Hall, we're going to have a good old-fashioned church potluck. So I invite you, if you would please sign up uh, using the list on the welcome table. Uh, sign up to bring a, a main dish, a side dish, bread, dessert, uh, something to drink. We're looking forward to this opportunity to just be in fellowship with one another, to connect across our two different services and just get to know each other even better. Uh, when I see you next Sunday, sit with someone uh, you don't know, and uh, it'll be a great opportunity for us to grow in fellowship as a church. I'm really excited for it. And then, friends, uh, we have summer family nights coming up. We're doing summer family nights in lieu of Vacation Bible School. Uh, so we invite you every Friday night from June 17th to July 22nd, every Friday night from 6 to 8 p.m. over in the Fellowship Hall. Uh, join us for a free meal, uh, some fun activities and games for the whole family to enjoy. Our first night on Friday, June 17th, is going to be a movie night. We're going to watch Encanto together. It's going to be a great night, fun, food, fellowship. Um, if you would like to sign up to volunteer for that, uh, leave me a note in your Connect card or be on the lookout for our weekly uh, Wednesday evening email newsletter, and we'll have a link to sign up. Uh, we have a Sign Up Genius that we've put together for you to sign up for the night and the role that you like to do. Uh, we're looking for volunteers to help us uh, lead activities, uh, set up, tear down, uh, uh, be a kitchen lead to make sure the food is, is prepared and served on time. So we're looking forward to uh, reaching out to our community in that way. We're going to invite all of the, the kids who are enrolled in our summer programming through the Children's Center. I think we have, it was like 38, 39 uh, K through 5 students who will be here throughout the day, Monday through Friday throughout the summer. And then we have an additional like 18, 19 students who are enrolled in our uh, preschool version of that. Uh, so, uh, what a great opportunity for us to connect with uh, our friends in the community, friends in the, in the Children's Center. So, we're looking forward to summer family nights. Mark your calendars every Friday night, 6 to 8 p.m., June 17th to July 22nd. And now, friends, uh, Pam has an announcement that she would like to share with you on behalf of our Staff Parish Relations Committee. Good morning, um, my name is Pam Hepner, and I am on the Staff Parish Relations Committee. And the committee would like you all to know that we now have a new custodian. Um, and her name is Susan Johns, she goes by Sue. And um, she is a teacher at Kathleen High School in Lakeland. And she, but she lives in Brandon, and she's gonna be working here in the evenings and um, we think she's gonna be a great fit. So if you happen to see her around, I believe she starts this week, right? She starts this week, so if you happen to see her around, just give her a warm welcome. Thanks. Thanks, Pam. Yeah. 
Uh, Sue is uh, super positive, super optimistic. We're looking forward to uh, uh, working with her and inviting her on the staff team. Uh, so if you see her, as uh, uh, Pam said, invite her, uh, welcome her, let her know how happy we are to welcome her as our custodian. We're glad to partner with her in ministry in that way. Uh, friends, at this time, I'm going to invite you to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. Thank you, Rob. Good morning, everyone. My name is Beth Pinson. Welcome to Limona Village Chapel. I'm really glad that you're here with us today. Please join me in our call to worship, which will be on the screens or it's in your book. God, bring your mighty power into our lives. Come, Holy Spirit of God. Burn light, bright flames in our hearts. Come, Holy Spirit of God, be with us today in our thoughts and our prayers. Come, Holy Spirit of God, be with us in our words and our deeds. Please join me in prayer. Lord God, you know us too well. You know that we would be like the disciples following the crucifixion and even the resurrection. 
we would rather hide and mutter and weep than proclaim the power of your love. The world is a difficult place. We fear so much. We want people to like us, and so we hold back on our proclamation of our faith. We don't want to offend anyone, but your love and presence are not offensive. They are empowering and healing. Bring your holy fire upon us this day to ignite a spark of joy in our hearts and our voices. Bring the power of your rushing wind through our spirits that we may be turned in new directions for service and witness. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now if you could please stand and join us in the hymn of praise, which is Holy, Holy, Holy. It will be on the screen, and it's also number 64 in the hymnal. Thank you. And now, if you would remain standing and join us in the affirmation of faith, which is the Nicene Creed, it is on page 880 in the hymnal, or it will be on the screen. We believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father.
And now, while we're standing, we may pass the peace of Christ to one another. Um, fist bump, whatever you're comfortable with, just remember that we are still living in the time of COVID. seated. Uh, friends, every week when we gather in this place, uh, we have an opportunity to pray with and for each other. We also have an opportunity to bear witness to the ways in which we've seen God at work, present, moving, and living, and breathing in our lives. So if you have a, a prayer request or a God sighting you'd like to share with us today, I'll invite you to raise your hand and, and, and be sure to uh, speak nice and loud so that I can hear you. I'll call on you and we'll enter into this time of prayer together. How can we pray for each other? Yeah. Well, I know that there's a bunch of small churches meeting in Steinbrenner Field this morning oh, to cool. uh, praise God together and yes. to worship Him um, Pentecost. And I'm praying that we go out to lots of people from the community that yeah. are Yeah. Yeah, there's a big gathering of, of little churches at Steinbrenner Field, you said? Yeah. Um, a bunch of churches are coming together, celebrating together on Pentecost Sunday. So we give thanks. We pray that uh, that lots of people would be drawn to that. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Continue prayers for Jim Barger. Uh, he had a bout of pneumonia. He's doing better, but he's still in the hospital waiting to be uh, discharged. So, yeah. Yeah, Laura. Praise that Leo's here with us today. Give thanks for that. Yes. Yeah, Pam. So I 
Happy birthday, Ethan. <laughs> yeah, so, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, happy birthday. Can we sing happy birthday to you, Ethan? All right. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Love it. Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, a friend of our family's is in the ICU at Brandon with um, mm. pneumonia and COVID. So prayers yeah. for her. Her name is Shannon. Prayers for Shannon. Shannon is a friend of the Pinson family. She is in ICU at Brandon Hospital with pneumonia and COVID. So absolutely. We continue with prayer. What is your mom's name? My mom is Lucille. Lucille. Um, I hope I don't cry. <laughs> for sharing that. Yeah. Uh, please pray for Lucille. I heard that she's uh, in rehab, right? Um, prayers for her. I know how hard that can be to have to, to take that step. Um, but what an incredible uh, question. Um, what does the cross mean to you? I think it's a question we can carry with us today. Yeah. Thank you. Any other prayer requests this morning? All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty God, we give you thanks today. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, that generous gift which bears fruit in our lives. We give you thanks for empowering us to go forth from this place, to go into all the world and, and tell the good news about you with all that we meet, from moms to friends to coworkers to people in our rehab facilities. Lord, you invite us to share the good news about you, and you empower us to do that work through the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, we give you thanks today. And we lift up, lift up all of the, the prayer requests and the praises that we've named out loud this morning. We pray for all of those things which remain unspoken on our hearts. And, Lord, we pray the prayer that you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Friends, we're going to jump into our children's message this morning. And today, uh, we have a little bit of a celebration going on. I have something very special here. I'm going to open it up for you. Anyone guess what's in this box? Any ideas? This is a hint. <laughs> We've got a birthday cake. It says Pentecost Sunday. Happy birthday, church. And uh, the reason we have some birthday cake today, I love birthday cake. It's a Publix cake, this worship service sponsored by Publix. <laughs> <laughs> Kidding. Uh, I love uh, the opportunity to celebrate the birthday of the church together. We say that uh, Pentecost is the birthday of the church because that's the day when the Spirit was poured out on the gathered disciples. Uh, Fifty days after uh, Jesus was raised from the dead on Easter Sunday. And so uh, we're going to celebrate today. Uh, we're going to have some cake. Uh, please don't leave here today without getting some cake. Uh, it'll be available in the lobby after the fact, after the service. But in the spirit of Pentecost, I figure we could uh, sing happy birthday once more. I'm going to light a candle for the church today.
we use fire on Pentecost Sunday because in Acts chapter 2, it talks about how when the gift of the Holy Spirit was given to the church, there were flames of fire that came down and, and fell upon each of the disciples in, in that room. Uh, and they were made able to, to speak in other languages, to share the good news about Jesus in other languages that they weren't able to speak on their own. And so we believe that God speaks in us and through us in that way. And so I invite you now, would you join me in singing happy birthday to the church? Happy And many more. <laughs> Beth, would you blow this out for us? Sure. Good job. It's the wind of the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, friends, it is the birthday of the church today. Um, every, uh, every week we uh, collect a noisy offering, a loose change offering uh, for Pakistan in response to our children's message. So if you brought some loose change to share with us this morning, just a reminder, drop that change uh, there on the, in the bucket on your way out. We'd love to continue supporting the ministry of feeding kids in our community. So friends, I'm gonna invite my friend Beth to introduce our next hymn of the morning. Please join us in the hymn of preparation, which is Spirit of the Living God. It's number 393 in the hymnal and will be on the screen. Please stand if you're able. Amen. You may be seated. Over the past couple of weeks, uh, we've been talking about the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we've been exploring what Scripture has to say about these three persons. Uh, you know, this idea that we have one God in three persons can be pretty confusing at times. <laughs> and my hope for us is that by exploring the Trinity, by talking about the Trinity, we'll gain a deeper understanding of who God is and how God is at work in our lives. Uh, today is a very special day in the church calendar. Uh, today is the day of Pentecost, the day on which we celebrate the gift of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. On this day, 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus on Easter Sunday, we remember how God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit so that we can proclaim the good news about Jesus to all the world. And so this is the big question we're going to wrestle with today. Who is the Holy Spirit? 
What does scripture have to say about this third person of the Trinity? And what makes the Holy Spirit so different from the Father and the Son? We're going to explore some of these questions today, starting with that first one. Who is the Holy Spirit? Uh, in our scripture for last week, Jesus had something to say about the Spirit. He said this. He said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. I will ask the Father, and he will send another companion who will be with you forever. This companion is the Spirit of truth whom the world can't receive because it neither sees him nor recognizes him. But you know him because he lives with you and will be with you. Uh, that's a verse out of John chapter 14. And so we hear that the Holy Spirit is a companion for us, someone who walks with us in the journey of faith. Uh, some translations of the Bible use the word helper or advocate here. And the idea is that the Holy Spirit helps us, advocates for us in our walk with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is the person of the Trinity who empowers us to continue walking in our journey of faith, step by step by step. And so on this Pentecost Sunday, I want you to think about how the Spirit might be inviting you to take your next step in your journey of faith. Maybe you're ready to, to say yes to Jesus, to say, yes, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life because I can't carry this weight on my own. I can't carry the, the weight of grief, the weight of brokenness, the way of, of pain in my body. I can't carry it on my own, and, and I need you because you are strong. And you alone are worthy of my worship and my praise. Or maybe you're ready to, to take a different step. Maybe you're ready to, to serve in a new way, or to practice generosity, or to, to pray regularly for the ministry of this church. Whatever it might be, how is the Spirit inviting you to take the next step in your journey of faith? Let's keep this in mind as we read our scripture for today. Our passage for today is Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. And it's, this is the traditional passage that we read on Pentecost Sunday. This is the Pentecost story. Let's hear this together. This comes from the Common English Bible Translation. When Pentecost Day arrived, they, meaning all the disciples, were together in one place. Suddenly, a sound from heaven, like the howling of a fierce wind, filled the entire house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be individual flames of fire, alighting on each one of them. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. There were pious Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. When they heard this sound, a crowd gathered, and they were mystified because everyone heard them speaking in their native languages. They were surprised and amazed, saying, look, aren't all the people who are speaking Galileans, every one of them? How then can each of us hear them speaking in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, as well as residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the regions of Libya bordering Cyrene, and, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the mighty works of God in our own languages. They were all surprised and bewildered. Some of them said to each other, what does this mean? And others jeered at them, saying, they're full of new wine. But Peter stood with the other 11 apostles, and he raised his voice and declared, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. 
After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Rather, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young will see visions. Your old, your elders will dream dreams. Even upon my servants, men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will cause wonders to occur in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and a cloud of smoke. The sun will be changed into darkness, and the moon will be changed into blood before the great and spectacular day of the Lord comes. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our Pentecost story begins with a theophany, a divine revelation of God, a sound from heaven like the howling of a fierce wind fills the house where the disciples are sitting. And they see what appears to be flames of fire alighting on each one of them. Now let me think, where else in Scripture do we see images of fire associated with God? What do you think? Burning bush? Good. Where else? The lion's den? Yeah. The furnace? What were the names of the guys in the furnace? You remember? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Uh, if you're familiar with that story, they refused to bow down to the, to the, I think it was the king at the time, and so they threw him into the furnace, and this figure comes to them in the middle of the furnace and, and, and saves them. Uh, they aren't harmed by the fire of the furnace. So yeah, where else in scripture do we see fire? Yeah, pillar of fire by night and the pillar of smoke by day in Exodus. Any other... Any other spots? There's one in Leviticus. Uh, there's a command to always have a fire, a light on your altar as a symbol of the abiding presence of God. Uh, and so we have uh, some, some lights on our altar. Now we put them out at the end of the service, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, lampstands in Revelation. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and Jesus talks about the lamp on the stand, right? Um, it's a common image we find in Scripture. So we see this, this, this image, this image of fire, as something that is associated with God throughout Scripture. And if we look at the logo of the United Methodist Church, what's on the left there? The flame. Uh, this is a symbol uh, uh, of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Um, we have this as, as part of our uh, United Methodist Church symbol uh, because we believe that the Spirit is the one who warms our hearts, making us able to see and hear the presence of God in our lives, just as we see all throughout Scripture. And fun fact with this logo, why do you think there are two flames in the logo? Any ideas? In 1968, <laughs> there was a merger of the Methodist Episcopal Church and the Evangelical United Brethren Church. And so each of those flames represents the two denominations coming together as one and the role of the Holy Spirit in bringing us together. Um, yeah, it's a fun fact. The more you know. <laughs> uh, this is why, let me see here. Uh, we were read on Pentecost Sunday as a marker of that, of the flames of fire that fall upon the disciples in Acts chapter 2. Um, we were read on Pentecost Sunday because it reminds us of those flames of fire, that gift of the Spirit that fell upon them. They were filled with the Spirit. And they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them to speak. And so we find that the Spirit empowers us to do things that we would not be able to do apart from God. Our scripture says that the crowd was surprised and amazed by this. They were surprised and amazed that 
that they're able to hear the gospel proclaimed in their own native languages. And so, my friends, the Holy Spirit is in the business of translating the gospel so that all people in all places might have the opportunity to get to know and love God. And as we can see in our passage for today, this divine work of translation is something that God can do in us and through us as disciples of Jesus. God can use our voices to share the good news of the gospel with every person we meet. And when I think about this work of translation on the day of Pentecost, I think about those 12 disciples gathered in that house. They were from a place called Galilee, and they spoke a language called Aramaic. And God was able to use their voices, their ancient voices, voices that would not be recognizable to us, and use them to proclaim the gospel, the good news, so that we might have the opportunity to hear the good news about Jesus. And so for me, the, the Bible itself is a really good example of this work. We know that Jesus and his disciples spoke Aramaic, and yet we know that the New Testament was written in a language called Koine Greek. And so how is it that Jesus spoke in one language while the biblical authors wrote in a different language? The Old Testament, even further, it is written in Hebrew for the most part. This is the work of translation. And it reminds me that the Spirit is at work when God uses our voices to translate the good news of the, of the gospel so that our neighbors can hear it. Let me give you an example. Where is Rob? There he is. Our pianist, Rob Nicholson, super awesome guy. Rob, you traveled to France not very long ago, and uh, Rob has been studying the French language for some time uh, in his free time, and he shares a story with me about how he was able to talk about Jesus with some of the friends that he met on that trip because he had been studying that language. He's able to talk with them about Jesus in their own native language. That's kind of what's happening in the scripture for today, right? He was able to translate the gospel for them. And how cool is that? How cool is it that we have a God who invites us to step across the barriers of language and culture and context? Who doesn't let these human limitations get in the way of the gospel? But our passage continues with some conflicting words from the crowd. Uh, some people are asking, what does this mean? What does this gospel message mean for us? Uh, they're curious. They want to know more about this guy named Jesus who rose from the dead on the third day. And then there are others in the crowd who are jeering at the disciples. They're mocking them, saying, oh, don't listen to them. They're full of new wine. They're just drunk. They don't know what they're talking about. But how does Peter one of Jesus' leading disciples, respond to the crowd. He says this. He says, Judeans and everyone living in Jerusalem, know this. Listen carefully to my words. These people aren't drunk, as you suspect. After all, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. And then he goes on to recite a passage from one of the prophets in the Old Testament, the prophet Joel, where God announces the gift of the Spirit. And the big point of that passage from Joel is that at the end of time, in the last days, God will provide the gift of the Spirit. And so Peter is pointing to this passage. And he's saying, that time is right now. We have received the gift of the Spirit today. And it's empowering us to do things that we weren't able to do before. We can prophesy and see visions and, and dream dreams. The kingdom of heaven is breaking into this world. Can you see it? Can you see the wonders that God is doing here? God causes wonders to occur in heaven and signs on the earth below. And these things happen outwardly and visibly as if God is giving birth to something new. And so on this day of Pentecost, 
we celebrate the birth of the church, the birth of this broken yet beautiful community of people who express their faith in outward and visible ways. Uh, the day of Pentecost is often called the birthday of the church because it marks the time when the gospel was first proclaimed to the multitudes beyond those who had followed Christ during his lifetime. And so on this day, we remember how God labored to bring the church into being. We remember the, the sacrifice that God made on our behalf so that we might be brought into beloved community with one another. And we remember the gift of the Holy Spirit, how it breathes new life into our lungs each and every morning. And we give thanks to God for these things. We give thanks to God for being so generous to us. In Galatians chapter 5, the Apostle Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit. He says, The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the outward and visible signs of the inward and spiritual work of the Spirit in our hearts. And so I ask you, how is the Spirit working in your heart today? Are you growing in love? Do you feel the, the joy of the Lord welling up in your soul? Do you have a peace that surpasses all understanding? Are you learning how to be patient with your friends and your family? Are you practicing kindness? Are you embodying goodness? Are you bearing witness to your faith in Christ? Are you learning how to be more gentle with your words and your actions? Are you practicing self-control? My friends, when we grow in any of these things, we know the Spirit is at work. We know that God is with us, and we know we are heading in God's direction. And so here is my simple invitation for you today. I want to invite you to let the Spirit work in your life. And as we get ready to dine at the Lord's table together, I want you to listen for how God might be speaking to you today, for how the Spirit might be moving you to take the next step in your journey of faith. Amen? Amen. Well, friends, we're going to turn to our time of Holy Communion this morning. Uh, I'll invite you to follow along. Uh, if, you, uh, if you prefer, you can open up your hymnal to the bottom of page 7, or you can just follow along on the screen. So I'll invite you to respond as the words on the screen appear. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to leave, live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right in a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
You formed us in your image and, and breathed into us the breath of life. But when we turned away and, and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through your prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn, saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, he fed the hungry, and he ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he proclaimed, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself for us, Jesus took bread. He gave thanks to you. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. When the supper was over, he took the cup. He gave thanks to you. He gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. I invite Beth to come and join me as we prepare to serve. As I struggle with these gloves. All right, we'll come for you later, birthday cake. Uh, because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we partake of the same loaf. Uh, the cup over which we give thanks is a sharing in the blood of Christ, just as the bread over which we give thanks is a sharing in the body of Christ. So we'll give that to you. Uh, friends, in the United Methodist Church, we celebrate an open table. Uh, and so regardless of your age, your nation, your race, uh, you are welcome to join us, to dine at this table, and because this table does not belong to us, but to Jesus. So I invite you now, our ushers will come forward and uh, we will uh, get ready to serve communion. We will um, uh, have you uh, form a single file line down the middle of the sanctuary. You'll receive a, a piece of bread for me. I'll say this is the body given for you. And then you'll uh, 
uh, will you give you a little cup of juice here? Uh, and uh, Beth will say, this is the body of Christ shed for you. So friends, uh, welcome to the table.
Let us pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, at this time, uh, we respond to, to the message that we've heard, this good news of the generous gift of the Spirit, uh, by giving freely and generously of ourselves to the tithes and the offerings. So I'm going to invite our ushers to come forward at this time, and we'll go ahead and pass the plates this morning. Will you join me in our prayer of thanksgiving? 
Accept our thanks and praise, O God, for you generously give to your people. May we become those who not only give generously, but live generously, sharing the bounty of your gifts and grace with all that we meet. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Friends, would you please remain standing for a hymn of response? This is One Bread, One Body, hymn number 620 in your hymnals, and the words will be on the screen. this benediction. My friends, go in peace in the knowledge and love of the gift of the Holy Spirit, of the birthday of the church. May the Spirit, who always looks over us and walks with us, empower you to go into all the world and proclaim the gospel so that everyone you might, everyone you meet, might have the opportunity to hear it. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, my friends. Be sure to grab a piece of cake on your way out. I'm going to walk out of there. I don't want to see anyone leave that door before I leave that door. <laughs> <laughs>